My name is Troy Pili. I am a manager for the Repatriation and Restitution Office at the South African Heritage Resources Agency, based at the SARA Satellite Office in Pretoria. The main responsibility of the Repatriation and Restitution Office is to coordinate the repatriation of mortal remains of heroes and heroines of the liberation struggle that died in exile and any other South African that is connected to the liberation struggle. My name is Ngalabu Tomatita. I am an employee of the South African Heritage Resources Agency, SARA. Um, I am the manager for burial crowns and graves within SARA, um, which uh, administers uh, Section 36 of the National Heritage Resources Act, um, insofar as um, non-development related uh, activities are concerned. Now, when I speak about Section 36, I'm talking overall the management of graves um, that are protected by the National Heritage Resources Act. Um, there are various categories of graves that are protected by the Act. We have ancestral graves um, that are covered. Any grave that is 60 years and older is automatically protected by the Act. Uh, graves of cultural significance, graves of traditional leaders, graves of victims of conflict. Um, and in the liberation struggle, in the South African war, and in any other war that was fought in South Africa. My name is Madeleine Fullard. I'm the head of the Missing Persons Task Team, which is a project in the National Prosecuting Authority of South Africa, falls under the Department of Justice. The Missing Persons Task Team was set up in terms of the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of South Africa, um, which recommended that government must set up a task team to continue tracing the fate and whereabouts of those who disappeared in political circumstances between 1960 and 1994, and to recover their remains where possible. So we are made up uh, partly of investigators and partly of forensic experts, forensic anthropologists and archaeologists. To date we've recovered, I think it's 180, the remains of 180 individuals inside South Africa <clears throat> and those have been returned to their families. We have a couple of other remains as well that we've exhumed that we are still struggling to identify um, and we are now uh, authorized to work on the exile repatriation project as well. The exile repatriation project came as a result of requests that are being made by families requesting for repatriation of remains of their loved ones who died in exile. Um, those were made in different departments, starting from local government to provincial government and um, to the South African Heritage Resources Agency, and also to the Missing Persons Task Team, which has been tasked with um, searching for people that disappeared uh, during the apartheid um, years, and some also that were were sentenced to death um, uh, due to the activities that they engaged themselves in in the anti-apartheid uh, resistance um, activities. This was really our very first um, step in the exile repatriation project and it relates to what we call phase two. Phase one is the names collection, which we've been doing constantly over the years, developing a database of names, combat names, pseudonyms, all kinds of names that people were using in, in exile because people could not live under their own names uh, for security reasons. Uh, so phase one involved developing that list of names for each country um, of those who, who may have died there. 
Now phase two involved coming to the country and doing what we call a mapping exercise. And that is trying to determine the burial sites, the precise burial sites to photograph, map and get GPS locations for each possible burial site. And as far as possible to link concrete identities of uh, missing exiles, deceased exiles to those burial sites. Um, for our purposes at the moment, the two main sites are Lusaka and Livingston. Lusaka has the largest number of casualties and deceased, but there are, we hear incidents in other towns and so on where people may have died and that will have to those will be followed up on subsequent visits but for now this was a mapping exercise in Lusaka and Livingston uh, to correlate our list that we developed in phase one with sites on the ground. The technical team arrived in Zambia on Sunday the 19th of November. On the 20th, a meeting was held with the South African High Commission to, to give a briefing as to what the purpose of the trip uh, to Zambia was. Thereafter, a courtesy call to the mayor of um, Lusaka and a meeting was also held with the Department of Public Health within Lusaga, which is responsible for the upkeep of um, graves within Lusaga and they keep and manage records, both the dead registers and the cemetery registers. And also a meeting was held with the officials from the uh, Lipas Hill Cemetery on Tuesday and Wednesday, and that's where the crunch time really was. It was to go to the cemetery and have access to the records so that from the record we could identify where people were buried. Um, and I think this, is, this was the most delicate part because some of the records, of course, were not in good shape. So we needed to go through the records systematically one by one, um, look at each name, try and identify from the record uh, names and surnames of people that we uh, that were familiar with as South Africans. Um, there, there are names, for instance, that were not part of the record that we were able to pick up from the uh, from going through the symmetry um, record and were added to the list. That's important because then. If we had simply gone on an exercise to verify what's on the record, we would have left out some people. So those names that were added demonstrates the importance of going through the record systematically so that you can then add people that were there. So that was the purpose for Tuesday and Wednesday. You have to trawl through whatever records exist. Uh, ideally, those should be copied and scanned so that you can continuously refer once we're back in South Africa. Um, so that's the second, the second area is the records of the cemetery. The third area is to then try to link those records and whatever grave numbers we may have to the site itself, the cemetery. Because in many instances, you might have excellent records and you know exactly who's buried in what number grave. But if you can't find that grave in the cemetery, because uh, maybe the, the uh, systems of organizing that cemetery are very complex. The, any marking system might not be apparent. The numbers often are put on little metal markers. Those have usually been stolen to sell for scrap metal. And so the indicators on the earth 
can be very scarce. You might have success in all of your phases up to there, but if you can't locate the graves in the ground, you've got nothing. So that is the third phase then. On Thursday, we then went to the field um, and walked through the cemetery to try and make sense of the um, of the burial of where people were buried, whether it matched with the grave number, um, and also to find other people that may not have been easily identifiable. I think on 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 Thursday it became clear that there were two types of tombstones for South Africans who are buried in Leopards Hill Cemetery. You had those that were clearly visible and high tombstones that are about maybe a meter or so. Um, but you also had those that are flat, which are on the ground. And so now trying to find those two, um, particularly the ones that were flat on the ground, uh, was a challenging task. Um, fortunately, the, the graves were, some had, a number of them had tombstones, which was of great assistance um, in order to locate them. So I think that that's an important part, a benefit and a plus from the project. On Friday, we went to the Military Health Academy in Zambia because two graves were identified to be in the, within the facility. Now, that Military Academy is important because um, it was established on a place where there was a clinic um, that was run by the, by the uh, African National Congress in exile. Um, and now it is, a, it is a military facility. When liberation movements were in exile, they exercised a level of cooperation amongst each other. Um, particularly Umkonto Wesizwe and Zipra. Um, what happened is that with the freedom camp being established outside um, Lusaka, members of Umkonto Wesizwe uh, went to assist at the refugee camp that was uh, named Freedom Camp. And um, Rhodesian security forces, of course assisted by South African um, um, security forces, raided that uh, camp in 1978 and massacred a lot of people, including members of Mkonto Wesizwe, that were assisting in that refugee camp. We picked up 13 names that are on the wall of remembrance on that particular uh, memorial. Now, it was important to, to, to undertake the site visit so that we can clearly identify uh, those members who were killed in that particular raid um, in, in 1978 and then include them in our, in our list. The team president to Livingstone on the 27th of November um, study, started with a courtesy call at the mayor's um, uh, parlor and the reception was quite good there. The mayor was quite knowledgeable about the South African struggle as to what happened within uh, Livingstone. Livingstone was a strategically important town um, for the liberation struggle for those who were exiting through Botswana into Zambia uh, so that they can continue their journey to Lusaka. For instance, Kazungula, the border between Botswana and Zambia, played a key role for those comrades that were coming through um, from Botswana into Zambia. So uh, if you consider that Kazungula is 60 kilometers from Livingston, it's then creates that uh, environment where people would come through to Livingston, perhaps briefly stay here and then proceed to Lusaka or receive further instructions here and then proceed. Now, also Livingston was imp is important because it was a crossing point for um, those that were returning to South Africa to fight against apartheid and, and, and to bring down this system that was really oppressing people. Uh, so Livingston served that dual purpose. People going into Zambia and those that were returning. There are certain people who died um, on the Zambezi River as they were crossing into Zimbabwe um, in the 80s. And um, the incident 
apparently a hippo hit their dinghy and then when that happened they then drowned they were then taken and buried here in Livingstone. Um, their names are part of the list that we brought from South Africa um, to come and verify here. Uh, and so the purpose of us coming to Livingstone was really to check through their records, what they have on their records and against our list that we had brought. Some of the challenges that we experienced in our work here in, um, in Zambia, both in Lusaka and in Livingston, the greatest challenge really is the record. Um, identifying people from the death registers. Um, some of the registers, of course over time, uh, pages have been, have been torn off. Um, and because those pages have been torn off and their state of conservation, I'm talking about the pages of the record in particular, are not stored in a, in a, in a good uh, environment. It has created that challenge that we needed to then reconstruct the record basically by um, um, putting together the pieces of papers that uh, had been torn off from the from the main registers and try to put them together so that we could make sense of the um, you know of the record that has been the situation in both lusaka and livingston that the records are patchy partial um, the paper itself fragmenting disintegrating um, we did our best to establish a complete list of what years are covered by cemetery records but given the state of the paperwork the fragility and the disintegrating nature uh, photographing and scanning was very was not going to be possible at this time uh, so those are things that you just can't predict um, you don't know what you're going to get um, and sometimes people might not want to hand over all the records because maybe they don't want to show what a poor condition they're in and so on. So sometimes it's a struggle also to get access um, on the ground to, to, to records, even if you might have been officially authorized. So those are all challenges that one meets in the field. You're working in outside environment with rain, in lo locations without electricity, in a cemetery, the possibilities of scanning, no machine. I mean, it's just very... Uh, you're working with very limited resources there. Coming to Zambia was a learning curve for the entire team, you know, as to what to expect going to the ground in um, a hosting country, forming a ground a team in those respective countries to actually assist with the identification uh, of graves. The visit, technical visit by the MPTT and by SARA has been very successful. Um, firstly, it's been successful in that we've been able to, one, clean the death registers and record in Lusaka and find people. And I think that that is important. Uh, some of the requests lodged by families for the return of their loved ones who died in exile, those graves have actually, some of them have been actually found. And that's an important, I think, success in that this will come as a relief to those families who've never visited the cemetery, uh, perhaps, uh, to look at those graves that their loved ones have actually been found and their graves have been located. I think this would be of comfort and it is a great success. Secondly, um, this is a great success in the sense that the number of people that, that have been identified and those that would be potentially repatriated is something that has not been done before at this scale. 
So this would give us, I mean, a, a mind map in terms of taking this process uh, forward. So that in itself, the identification of so many people um, with the assistance of, of course of local authorities and um, the possibility that it opens up of taking them home for reparian um, actually brings um, a whole new dynamic uh, going forward uh, in benchmarking for the subsequent uh, projects that will come in other countries as well. So I think this has been the great success. Um, and then secondly, of course, the composition of the team has been one highlight that um, with the experience that comes with the MPTT um, and the work that they have done in other in other places we have learned a lot um, um i mean from our side as the burial grounds and graves and as sarah um, their skill will assist us in conserving other graves as well not just outside but also within the country um, in terms of um, how what processes do they follow um, and and how do they arrive at the conclusions that they do uh, in terms of identification. I think that is an asset for the organization, Sara, and also for the unit uh, going forward. We are going to be able to repatriate some individuals. Um, at the moment, I would say maybe around 30 to 40 percent of those who's, for whom we have names at this point, but we understand that it's going to require a second level of research and investigation to go beyond the ones that perhaps are more easily found uh, from tracing death registers with the Zambian authorities to records of the liberation movement um, back in South Africa to records of the government departments in Zambia that liaised with the liberation movements uh, such as the African Liberation Centre and also have to look at a plan to physically improve the visibility on the, on the ground itself. Another important perhaps success here has been establishing the link with the local authorities, um, creating that, that, that rapport with the Zambian um, authorities who have been most helpful um, in this particular uh, project. So I think that, that that's a highlight because for subsequent projects, even if some people perhaps are not identified now, but when we refine uh, through research in identifying more people, they already have a background of where the project comes from and why perhaps a second phase would be happening um, and so on. So I think that, 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 that network and linking with the relevant authorities here, I think has been a great success as well.